Hello guys, welcome back to CBAX Tutorial Channel and this is our Chapter 1 Live Loads for Structural Theory 1. So tapos na tayo sa topic na dead loads ngayon naman, pag-usapan natin ang live loads. So, live loads can carry both in their magnitude and location or can, can vary, I'm sorry, vary. So sabihin, nagbabago. Ayan. So, if you magnitude, pwede kasi siyang maging distributed load, pwede rin siyang maging concentrated load. Then, iba-iba rin yung kanilang location. So, they may be caused by the weights of objects temporarily placed on structure by moving vehicles or by natural forces. So, isa-isa natin yan. So, yung mga temporarily placed on structure, kabilang dyan yung mga fixtures. Ano na ba yung mga yan? Mga upuan, mga mesa, uh, yung mga TV sets ninyo. Kasi hindi naman siya permanent na i-install o ilalagay sa inyong uh, structure. So therefore, included sila sa live load. Then moving vehicles, yan yung mga tinatawag natin na moving loads. And yung natural forces, ano na yung mga yan? Wind load, rain load, snow load, kung meron nga dito sa Pilipinas, ayan. Under yan sa live load. Pero, itong mga to, yung wind, wind load, rain, lo uh, rain load, snow load, uh, meron silang uh, separated na provision on how to solve these types of loading. Pero, included pa rin sila sa live loads natin. Kaya nga, meron tayong tinatawag na roof live load. Ayan. Galing yan doon sa roofing. So, syempre sa roofing, ano ba yung mga loads na meron doon? Yung wind load. So, minsan, sinasolve natin yung roof live load natin. And, syempre, yung pinakaalam natin na napaka-imposible talaga na i-place or i-install sa structure permanently is tayo, di ba? Mga tao. So, include tayo sa live loads. So, check natin yung table natin dito based on our building loads. So, the floors of buildings are assumed to be subjected to uniform live loads which depend on the purpose for which the building is designed. So, meron siyang different purposes or use. Depende kung ano yung occupancy category na meron dun sa ating building. For example, yung building natin is para sa office building or storage house. Iba-iba yung ating magnitude dyan. So, isa-isa natin yan. Una, assembly areas and theaters. Kapag fix daw yung mga upuan, yung ating live load is 2.87 kN per meter squared. Kapag movable ang seats, 4.79 kN per meter squared. Kapag garages, passenger cars only, 1.92 kN per meter squared. Ito, kapag office building, sa mga lobbies, sa offices, sa lobbies, 4.79 and sa offices is 2.40. Then, for the storage house, meron tayong dalawang type, light and heavy. Take note, this table is ano ha, hindi pa buo. Kung titignan ninyo yung NACP 2015, napakarami yan. Meron tayong minimum live loads na floor load, then meron rin tayong nakakoncentrated loads. So, ang ginagamit lang natin dito is based on R.C. Hebeler's Structural Analysis um, 8th edition. Ayan. So, saan bang nagaling to? Sa minimum live loads, Reproduced with permission from American Society of Civil Engineers, minimum design laws for building and other structure or ASCE SEI 7-10, American Society of Civil Engineers. So, mga ano lang yan, minimum or mga parang, uh, yes, kung minimum, ibig sabihin, hindi tayo pwedeng bumaba sa ating loadings, pero pwede tayong tumaas. So, yun yung mga basic na type of loads. Siyempre, di mawawala yung residential. Kapag dwellings for one and two family, 1.92 kN per meter squared. Kapag hotels and multifamily houses, private rooms and corridors, and public rooms and corridors, 1.92 and 4.79 respectively. If sa school naman, meron tayong classroom, first floor corridors, and corridors above, above first floor, 1.92, 4.79, and 3.83 kN per meter squared. Then, dopo check na lamang yung PSF. Ang ibig sabihin ng PSF is pounds per square foot. So, the values are determined from a history 
of loading various buildings and they include some protection against the possibility of overload which can occur during construction or from vibration while the building is in service. So, ibig sabihin, throughout the history ng paggamit ng tao sa different types of building, doon nila nakuha itong mga magnitude ng ating live load. So, in addition to uniform concentrated, ay sorry, to uniform disabled load, some codes specify minimum concentrated live loads. Kaya nga, kung double check nyo, yung sa ating NCP 2015, meron dong minimum concentrated live loads. And sometimes it costs by hand carts, automobiles, etc. Which must also be applied to the floor system. Basta lahat ng hindi permanent dun sa ating structure, lahat yun is matatawag natin na live load. So, kung, na, kung na, uh, naalala ninyo sa dead load, pinag-usapan natin yung mga balusters. Yun. Di ba yung mga balusters, i-insertan siya permanently. Hindi natin siya tatanggalin nun. So, under siya sa dead load. Then, yung mga live load, yung mga upo, upuan kapag classrooms. So, live load reduction. So, for some types of buildings, having very large floors or floor areas, many codes will allow a reduction. Ay, sorry. Yan. Yeah. Yeah. Reduction in the uniform live load for a floor. Bakit kaya? Since... It is unlikely, ayan, unlikely daw, that the, the prescribed live load will occur simultaneously. Ayan. Kaya minsan, kuwari, sa office natin, nakalagay na doon is, ilan ba? 2.40. Hindi buo na 2.40 ang sasaluhin ng ating slab. No? Kaya, since hindi naman natin 100% or parang natin, ano, 100 assurance, na mag o yun ng buong-buo na 2.40 kN per meter squared, ang ginagawa natin is i reduce natin yung ating live load. So, under sa ASCE 7-10, it allows a reduction of live load on a member having an influence area KLL multiplied by 80 is equivalent to 400 feet squared or 37.2 in meter squared or more. So, ang influence area natin is ito, yung KL80. So, yung atin namang 80, ang tawag natin dyan ay tributary area. So, kapag minutipin natin ang KLL, yun yung ano, uh, matatawag natin siya na influence area. So, if you say influence area, yun yung magsasalon ng ating live load. So, sabi niya rito sa ASCE 7-10, if yung ating influence area daw ay equivalent, lagay natin, if ang ating KLL multiplied by T is equivalent or greater than sa 400 feet squared or 37.2 meter squared, kailangan natin mag-reduce ng live load. So, para ma-reduce natin ng live load, gagamitin natin yung equation na to. So, for English, ito. Ito naman for SI or metric system. So, L is equivalent to L naught multiplied by 0.25 plus 15 all over square root of KLL multiplied by T. So, ano yung L not? This is the initial live load. So, yung, ito yung L not natin or initial live load is galing doon sa table natin. Pwede siya check lang natin kung uh, nag-greater than ba tayo or nag-equal tayo sa 37.2 meters squared. Then, kapag oo, doon natin kailangan mag-reduce ng live load. Then, para naman sa metric system, 4.57 ito. Over square to uh, influence area. So, double check natin yung mga meaning nila. Ang ating L is the reduced design live load. Per square foot or square meter of area supported by the member. Then, L not is the unreduced design live load or the initial live load per square foot or square meter of area supported by the member. Then, ang ating KLL is the live load element factor. So, for interior columns daw, ang ating KLL is equivalent to 4. Then, ang ating AT is the tributary area in square feet or square meters. Then, we have an, another provision for the reduction of live load. The reduced live load defined in our equation is limited to not less than 50% of L0 for members supporting 
one floor only. Or not less than 40% of LNAT for members supporting one or supporting more than one floor. So yung ating daw reduce live load should be not less than. No, kung not less than, so it's being greater than. So it should be greater than or equivalent. Not less than, dito pwedeng bumaba. So it should be greater than or equivalent to our 50% ng LNAT. Para daw san to? Para sa one story. One story build, ah uh, one story house or one story building or bungalow. Then kapag daw ano two or more ang ating L or design live load should be greater than or equivalent to 40% of our initial live load. So this is two or more story. Then meron pang sinabi rito, wala raw tayong kailangan na reduction na gagawin do sa ating live load if nag-exceed daw yung ating LNAT sa 4.79 kN per meter squared or for structures used for public assembly, garages, or roof. So, hindi pa natin kailangan to no, na i-reduce yung garages, then, ano pa sabi din? Garages, public assembly, and roof. Public assembly, yan, hindi kailangan daw i-reduce yan. Ito, actually, 4.79 na nga ito eh. Then, uh, roof. Uh, walang proof. Okay, yan. So, hindi natin kailangan daw i-reduce. So, check natin sa NSCP. Itong reduction live load na ito. Kasi mamaya, sabihin natin na wala naman tayong ganyan sir sa NCP. So, under yun sa section 205.6. Alternate floor live load reduction. As an alternate to equation 205-1, the unit live load set forth in table. Ito yung mga table natin ha. Yung mga table na mga minimum live load. Uh, yung mga unit loads daw doon may be reduced in accordance with equation 205-3. Ito yun. When any member, including flat slabs, having an influence area of 40 meters squared or more. So, sa ano, ASCE, 37.2 lang. Sa atin naman, 40 square meters. So, kapag daw ang ating influence area is na greater than or equivalent sa 40 meters squared, doon tayo magre-reduce ng live load. Siyempre, under tayo ng metric system sa Pilipinas, though, iba-iba naman talaga yung sukatan ng ating dito, mga dimensions or measurements. Diba? So, anyway, uh, metric system tayo, that is 4.57, ito yun. Ayan. Then, over square root of T. As square root of I. Sorry, sorry. This is A. Ay, nababasa ko siya T. So, ang ating AI is the influence area, which is equivalent, of course, to our KLL multiplied by the tributary area. So, medyo piyadali lang naman yan, ha? ni NCP yung uh, equation. Pero, sino sin lang? 0.25, then plus 4.57 over square root of AI, which is influence area. Then, ganun pa rin, no? Ang ating L is reduced design live load. Ang ating L not is unreduced design live load per square meter. Then, nakalagay rin dito, ito na siya, isa-isa siya. The influence area or AI is 4 times, you know, 4 times the tributary area for a column. No? Hindi niya nilagay ko interior or exterior, pero sabi lang ito, for a column. So, sa lahat siguro ng column, 4 times tayo. Then, 2 times naman daw yung ating influence line para sa tributary area for a beam. And then, Para naman daw sa panel area for two-way slab, yung ating ano, uh, influence area is equivalent lang din sa mismong influence area natin. And equal to the product of the span and the full flange with for a precast TV. And then, naka-include rin dito yung uh, nilagay rito ng ASCE. Yung ating daw reduced live load shall not be less than 50 Ayan, shall that be less than 50% of the unit live load or LNAT for members receiving load from one level only. And then, um, para naman daw sa two or more story, dapat greater than tayo sa 40% of the unit live load or initial live load for other members. Ah, for other members, so, nakalagay rito for other members. Ah, yes, for members, but it uh, that may nakalagay rin na supporting for more than one floor. 
'di ba? Napakasimple lang naman nitong ating live load reduction. So yan, magkakaroon ng mga example na kung saan check natin kung kailangan pa nating mag-reduce ng live load or pwede na nating gamitin mismo yung ating L nut. Pero sa design, no? Pag nagdi-design tayo, siguro mas maganda na rin na buong na nating i-reduce kahit papaano, 'di ba? Kasi syempre ang gusto natin kahit papaano is uh, makuha natin yung critical loadings na i-apply natin sa mismong building or uh, residential house, 'di ba? So in Uh, mas hindi kasi tayo sure kung ano eh, kung mababawasan siya kahit pa paano. Though, sinabi naman dito, unlikely nga naman talaga siya. Pero, para sa assurance natin, kumbaga, expect the worst, eh, talagang makukuha natin 100% yung live load na ipapasa natin doon sa ating building. So, for me, mas maganda yun kahit pa paano. Pero, syempre, Hindi sa kanila kasi, dito sa ating design, hindi kasi masyadong maganda kung overloading yung uh, tapas natin sa, ano, or ilagay natin sa design, ba diba? Pero kapag ako nag-design, sa bagay, mga dinidesign ko lang naman kasi sa mga residential, malit lang perka kasi yung loadings niya. Ang residential, ito, 1.92 nga lang naman kasi siya. Doon sa seminar na uh, pinuntahan ko, ang ginagamit nga lang nila actually is 1.90 kN per meter square. Ah, yes! Based on ano? Based on NCP 2015, ang nakalagay is 1.90 kN per meter squared dun sa residential. Yan. So, this is our introduction for our chapter 1 live load. So, if you enjoyed and learned from this video tutorial, please don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon for notifications and updates on our YouTube channel. So, kita-kita tayo sa mga example natin. Thank you for watching. God bless everyone. Bye-bye.